Hello, N4H&H here again with another video in the series that I'm doing uh, to answer the question, what settings I, do I use in my uh, Yaesu FTDX 5000, my menus, uh, menu settings. So I've uh, been covering the receive side, so uh, this is going to, again, be in that realm. Uh, menu number 105 and 106, you'll see this says LSB car and USB car. Uh, that stands for carrier, it's short for carrier. So this is controlling something called carrier insertion. And I'll get, in a few minutes, I'll get to uh, the significance of that as it relates to the shift uh, control, the shift, um, let, me, let me back out of the menu a second. So shift right here, and uh, let me put it, let me zero it, there we go. So the shift um, control of our radio. So, um, We'll get, we'll get into that in a few minutes. First of all, I want to give, especially for those who might be new to the hobby, I want to give a little bit of a background on what this is all about. So ham radio started out with spark gap transmitters um, uh, that were, they were using uh, Morse code, CW, and um, is how we refer to it today, CW, continuous wave. And, um, and in CW, what we're doing, we're, we're, Turning, turning on and off our transmitter, but we're sending a carrier. We're just interrupting the carrier and making it short transmissions, long transmissions to create the dits and dots or dashes and dots and, or dots and dashes, dits and dots that we use to send CW. So then um, came along AEM, amplitude modulation, where we took the same carrier and we transmitted it constantly and then um, we had voice information. We had a microphone, and that information was carried in what's called sidebands, upper and lower side of the carrier. On the receive end, the other the other radio with where the person is listening to you, there's a circuit in there called a detector, and the detector locks onto that carrier. And once it's locked onto the carrier, it knows where to look to get the voice information up and down below the carrier, above and below the carrier upper sideband, lower sideband. So your voice is being carried in those sidebands. Now, uh, the next step in making radios more efficient was, well, what if we could um, suppress the carrier? The same information is being uh, transmitted in both sidebands, so maybe we could even suppress one of the sidebands, and that way um, we'll make the, we can make the transmitter more efficient. And... Uh, let me sidestep a second and relate this to maybe a CB radio for those of you who may have come from the CB background. CB radios will transmit a four watt carrier and then the voice information will be on the upper and lower sidebands. Uh, but if you take a CB radio and add the sideband feature to it, so, and some models have upper sideband, lower sideband, the same transistors that are producing the four watt carrier in the two sidebands can now produce 12 watts of power. So it's more efficient. Same transistors. Um, because what's going to happen is instead of constantly transmitting a carrier while you're talking, it's only transmitting when you speak. It's only putting out power when you speak. And so you can ramp that up and put out 12 watts of power because you're, you're now getting rid of one the carrier and one of the sidebands and you're focusing all of the energy on that one sideband that you're going you're gonna, to uh, transmit. So the radio on the other end is going to have to de demodulate that. And um, so we'll get into in a minute how that works. So the bottom line is sidebands more efficient than AM. We can use the same transistor tubes back in the day too uh, to, to create the, uh, the RF energy that is carrying your voice. And in essence, what we're saying is let's not transmit a carrier, which is silent. Let's transmit just the voice information. So um, let's talk about AM radio, like AM broadcast. So when you're driving down the road and you're listening to, say, a talk radio, in between the words, you don't hear the static, as it's referred to, the, the uh, noise from your receiver and even some atmospheric noise. You just hear silence, and that is a carrier. And that carrier is necessary for your car stereo to lock onto and then know where to look for the sidebands, which is where the voice information is, or it could be music. Um, so uh, 
sideband, what we do is we suppress. We, we knock down that carrier and we knock down one of the sidebands and we focus all of the energy on just carrying the voice information. Um, now, let's, let's talk about the, there's, some, there's a problem that presents, but there's a solution too. Um, but before I get into that, I do want to mention that in ham radio, especially for those who are new, the easy way to remember which sideband do we use, because we actually utilize both sidebands, but separately. Um, on 40 meters, 7 megahertz and lower, so 40 meters, 80 meters, you know, the 3.5 to 4 megahertz range, and 160 meters, 1 1.8 to 2 megahertz, we have always used sideband as a general rule. 20 meters, 14 megahertz and higher, we generally use upper sideband. And when I say higher, up through, you know, even six meters. Um, but especially, you know, 14 megahertz to 29.7, we tend to use um, upper sideband. Well, and I really shouldn't say 29.7 because up in that range, we're using FM on, on ham radios. But for example, 28.3 to 28.5, um, which is the area of the t of 10 meters where technician class um, licensees can operate sideband. That is upper sideband. So as a general rule, 14 megahertz and up, we use upper sideband when we're going to use a sideband. But for uh, and we want you know 10 10 megahertz is is that's predominantly CW, so that one we're not going to worry about. But seven megahertz and down, we generally will use lower sideband. It's just uh, kind of a thing. It's just the way we've always done it. Now there is an exception these days. We have the 60 meter band, 5.3 to 5.405 megahertz here, 53.30 technically. Um, so if you can see in the screen there, that is upper sideband, even though it's below seven megahertz. Well, there was an exception there. So this is the newer band to us that we have shared also with the, with the military or government and um, it has it was designated as channel, so we don't really control that with the VFO. Um, and uh, the sideband has been chosen for us, and it is upper sideband. So now we have an exception um, to the rule. But in, but generally, 40 meters and down, 40 to 160 has been lower sideband. Now we have the exception: 60 meters, five megahertz uh, range is going to be upper sideband, and then 20 meters and up. Uh, 14 megahertz and up is generally going to be upper sideband. Just kind of a way uh, at some point, I'm not sure the history on that. Maybe somebody can comment here on the video and let me know what's the history of who de who decided that we would use lower sideband on the lower frequencies and upper sideband on the upper frequencies. Um, now there's something about the band limits you may recall from the test. Um, for example, on, on lower sideband, even though, let's say, okay, for an extra class, uh, well, let me, let's go with general. So a general class licensee can, uh, can operate from 7.175 to 7.3. But since you're using lower sideband, you need to be aware that you, you're going to possibly extend 3 kilohertz below um, in frequency. So really, even though the the chart says you can operate 7.175 to 7.3. You want to really, if you're going to use lower sideband, you want to be at 7.178. There are test questions about that. That way, when you speak, your sideband, which is going to be on the low side, for example, this is, we're kind of faking it and saying, well, Mike, if I had a carrier, if I was sending out a carrier, it would be on 7.178. So the voice information, since we're transmitting lower sideband, will be below that. And if we're three kilohertz wide, then we could extend down to 7.175. So that's one of the things to be aware of when you're using lower sideband, and it's the reverse of that on upper sideband. So if you're a general class licensee and you're operating on uh, 20 meters, then um, really any licensee uh, in this case, because 14.350 is the top end of our uh, um, our legally uh, sanctioned range. Well, since we're using upper sideband, if I transmitted there at 14.350, my sidebands, being the upper side, would extend up to 14.353. Again, 
that could be a test question and you got to know that the, the maximum frequency you could uh, use as your you know what would have been a carrier uh, let's just call it the center frequency the maximum you could go using upper sideband on 20 meters would be 14.347 because your your voice information which you know is typically up to three kilohertz in, in uh, bandwidth will be above the 14.347 and you don't want to get past 14.350 okay so there we go about okay which you know which do we use lower sideband upper sideband uh, it depends upon what band you're on is a general rule and then you got to be careful about the band edges so here's the problem back to the am am receiver has that detector circuit that locks on to the carrier and then it knows once it once it's locked onto the carrier, it knows where to find the voice information in the upper and lower sidebands. And so we talked about how in the evolution of amateur radio, we decided well it's gonna it'll be a lot more efficient if we just transmit one sideband, no carrier. Um, so we we're gonna concentrate all our energy in one of the sidebands. And it's 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 interesting if you do relate it to CB because think of this. The CB radio could transmit an AM carrier of four watts. That was the legal limit and two sidebands. If, so if we take, uh, take the carrier out of the equation and take one of the, one of the sidebands out of the equation, we can triple our power. A CB radio would be allowed then 12 watts of sideband power. So it's almost like uh, you know a third of your power is used up in the carrier, a third of your power is used up in each sideband. So the, the, the same exact transmitter, like I said before, can be used and you can transmit triple the power that you would have if you were transmitting AM in both sidebands uh, without overheating your, your final, be it a tube or a transistor. So that's great. But the problem is on the other end, the people receiving you, um, you hear this? It's going to give that Star Wars effect because um, the detector has nothing to lock onto, right? The, the, what we have to do, what we have to do, is with our VFO, and you kind of do this by ear. But fortunately, modern radios are so precise, you can pretty much guess that that he's centered up on 7.178. So what? In other words, let me bring this plane in for a landing. Think of it this way: on the other end, he's his radio. Is transmitting on 7.178 but he's suppressing his carrier and he's also suppressing the upper sideband we're on 40 meters he's only transmitting the lower sideband so on my end I have to recreate if you will that center point I have to kind of decide well okay his carrier must have been on 178 because he sounds clear and he's not talking let me find somebody else Okay, so here's an example. The detector would automatically find a carrier, see, and lock on and make that clear, but we don't have a carrier. So, so see, I can tell by the way he sounds that he is he's centered up on 7.189, but his radio, his transmitter, is not sending a carrier for 7.189. I have to, you could say superimpose it. I, I have to, to on this end, kind of, do a little guesswork with how he sounds to figure out where his carrier might have been. But again, modern radios make that kind of easy because most of them are pretty solid um, with their oscillators that create, you know, the um, the frequencies that we use. Uh, they they're pretty well stay stable. Um, older radios drifted some, and you would, you know, you might find a guy sounded better there. And some of the new radios even can have uh, reference oscillators that that are not locked on they don't maybe they don't have the TCXO option or like this radio has the oven controlled oscillator which is even tighter than a TCXO so they might drift a little bit and that's why we have a clarifier but that's a that's another discussion so with all that as a backdrop let me explain the LSB carrier insertion and USB carrier insertion uh, portions of the menu here uh, quite simply, it determines what the center point is for your shift control. So let me uh, let me get somebody talking. So and it so it affects receive. 
All right, so that, here's a guy talking, and this is, I'm, I'm going to adjust lower sideband since I'm on a, a lower sideband. Um, if, in other words, if I make an adjustment here on 106, which is USB carrier insertion, you're not going to hear a difference here. Now, it's at zero hertz, which is the default, and honestly, I usually leave it there. So why would you ever change this? Let's just say that your ear is such that you hear a lot of highs and you don't hear a lot of lows. So you could go down to 200 hertz. And if, if you'll notice, some of the high end is knocked down. Let me let you hear it, but I'll, I'll explain. The high end knocks down and you get a little bit more. It's not necessarily boosting lows, it's just cutting highs. So listen to that. You hear when I get back to zero, the highs are now more apparent. Now you can do the reverse of that by going plus. So you hear how it thinned up, thinned out. So it's a subtle difference, but what you can do is slightly tailor the receiver so that when your shift is at zero, so for example, let me jump out of here. Shifts at zero, but zero, the way I've got it set now, zero is really 200 hertz low. And so I'm going to get a little bit less of my high emphasis in the audio I'm listening to. Now, go back into the menu and I'll go the other way. You hear it get thin, more high emphasis. So now what I'm saying is that my shift control, even though it shows zero here, is technically plus 200 hertz from the default. So if you have a, if you have a, if you can't hear highs very well, you might like this setting um, because this is going to emphasize more highs and less lows. If you, again, if you have ears that don't hear low end very well, then, um, and you know, age can get you on, uh, usually though it's the highs we lose, um, then you could do it the other way and emphasize more of the low tone. Um, and you can hear it here even when nobody's talking. Listen to the, listen to the background noise. So those are extremes. What you might really wind up doing is finding a happy medium for yourself. Um, I will mention that as far as QRM is concerned, sometimes, you know, you, you can do this with the shift control, but you could just say, well, I just naturally don't want to hear a lot of highs. And, you know, sometimes you hear that high sizzle sound when somebody's, you know, two kilohertz away or three kilohertz away and splattering. Well, you can knock some of that out just by keeping this, you know, at a, at a negative setting. But sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes the interference is a low, a low sound. So I just generally run it in, at zero. But again, you could tailor this to your ears. And all, again, all you're really doing is you're deciding where is the center of my shift control going to rest. And you could just say, well, I'm just going to let zero be negative 100 hertz. Um, now, 106 is the same thing, but for USB. That's the only difference, so I won't go into that. Both of these controls accomplish the same task, one for USB and one uh, for LSB. So 105, lower sideband carrier insertion. And where that, in other words, where you reinsert the carrier, that's why I wanted you to get that background, where you reinsert the carrier so that your detector has something to lock onto to get the sideband information, you can you can slightly you can vary that up and down 200 hertz and control uh, the audio spectrum that the detector is able to 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 get out of that um, of that signal, and so we can make it favor more low end, less high end, or which is negative settings, or we can make it favor more highs and less lows with a positive setting. Okay, so there you go. That's menu 105 and uh, 106 in the FTDX 5000 MP. I uh, hope you found this helpful and informative. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.